Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Logger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we'll talk about shares of stock, the nature and classifications. And I've uh, di divided the discussion on stocks into two episodes, no? I'll be talking about the nature and classifications here and other matters in the second episode, okay? Considering the length of the discussion. Now before everything else, I just want to thank each and every one of you because as of last night, this channel just reached 15,000 subscribers, okay? So thank you guys. Please continue sharing this channel to your friends and classmates so, so we can try to help everyone that we can, okay? Now, uh, if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. A like on this video and any of my other videos would also be greatly appreciated, okay? So in the last episode, I talked about how to create a regular private corporation. And of course, in order to function, a corporation needs capital. And capital covers properties and assets of a corporation that are used for its business or, or operation, no? And it includes the surplus and the undivided profits, okay? Now, a corporation at, during incorporation, no, it raises capital either through borrowings from creditors no, or through funds furnished by stockholders. No? So, when the stockholders give funds, what they get in return would be the shares of stock, which is what we'll talk about today. Just remember that the capital is different from the capital stock. Okay? And the capital stock is the amount fixed in the Articles of Incorporation, which I'll refer to here on as Articles, huh? to make it fast. It's fixed in the Articles to be subscribed and paid by the stockholders and upon which the corporation is to conduct its operation. Okay? The capital stock represents the equity of the stockholder in the corporate assets. Okay? Now, according to Section 64, the capital stock of corporations shall be divided into shares for which certificates signed by the president or vice president, countersigned by the secretary or assistant secretary, and sealed with the seal of the corporation shall be issued in accordance with the bylaws. Okay? Now, a stock or a share of stock is one of the units into which the capital stock is divided. Okay, it's different from the capital stock in that the stock is used in a distributive sense in that they refer to the stock in the hands of the stockholder. Capital stock is used in a collective sense to signify the whole body of the shares of stock in a corporation. So like the capital stock is the hand okay, and the shares of stock would be the fingers. Okay? Now a share of stock represents the interest or right which the owner thereof has in the management of the corporation in which he takes part through his right to vote, okay, in case voting rights are permitted for that class of uh, stock by the articles, no? So, uh, the stockholder can manage the corporation by voting, okay? It also represents the interest or right which the owner has in a portion of corporate earnings if and when segregated in the form of dividends. And it also... And also, third, upon dissolution and winding up, it represents the interest in the property and assets remaining after payment of corporate debts and liabilities to creditors. Okay? Now, a share of stock represents a distinct undivided share or interest in the common property of the corporation. Remember, a corporation has a personality separate and distinct from the stockholders. And therefore, a stockholder is not the owner of any property of the corporation, nor is he entitled to possess it. Okay? If a corporation again has a beach house in Boracay, the stockholder cannot say, Hey, I am also an owner of that. Now I can use it anytime I want. No. Separate and distinct personality. What the corporation owns, it owns. What the stockholder stockholder owns, he owns. Okay, he cannot claim ownership over that. He is only entitled to an inchoate right to such properties represented by the share, which can only be realized after the corporation is dissolved and liquidated. Meaning, 
he can only claim a share in that beach house once it has been sold and liquidated no and he can get the corresponding value he is entitled to by virtue of his share okay in other words a share of stock only represents an undivided part of the corporation's property or the right to share in its proceeds to the extent when distributed according to law okay also shares of stock are not a debt of the corporation to the stockholder in that the stockholder cannot file a case to claim contributions which the corporation needs or dividends in case they were not distributed okay so uh, it's not a debt now the law allows for different kinds of shares when it says in section 6 that shares in stock corporations may be divided into classes or series or of shares or both okay subject of course to the doctrine of equality of shares according to that doctrine each share shall be equal in all respects to every other share except of course as provided in the articles and in the certificate of stock okay so if the corporation does create different kinds of shares the classification of shares their corresponding rights privileges restrictions and their stated par value if any they must be indicated in the articles so if the articles does not contain any provision for a distinction of shares then all shares should be treated equally they enjoy the same rights and privileges the board meaning the board of directors huh? the board cannot grant additional rights if they are not provided for in the articles the distinguishing features of each stock they must also be stated in the certificate of stock okay so in general the kinds of shares may be common preferred voting non-voting par value no par value treasury redeemable and founders shares okay now there may be others like uh, escrow uh, stock no but uh, i'll just discuss the more important ones covered by the law okay the ones that i just mentioned so let's begin with uh, common shares and common shares they represent the residual ownership interest in the corporation it as the name implies no it is the most basic class of stock which is ordinarily and usually issued without any extraordinary rights or privileges it simply entitles the stockholder to a proportionate division of profits without any preference or advantage over other stockholders okay now the stockholders they are residual owners because they only get whatever assets are left in liquidation after all other security holders are paid kaya nga residual yun natira residue okay now preferred shares okay Preferred shares are those which entitle the stockholder to a certain priority. And according to the law, they may be issued only with a stated par value. Okay? Now, uh, preferred shares may be classified as cumulative, non-cumulative, participating, non-participating, preferred as to dividends, or preferred as to assets upon uh, distribution. Take note that preferred stockholders are not creditors of the corporation by virtue of the preferred shares okay they cannot demand okay they cannot generally demand the privileges of the preferred share as a matter of right especially since preferred shares no they are issued as an additional enticement for creditors to invest okay but there is no guarantee that the holder of the preferred shares will definitely receive the privilege okay there's no guarantee especially in the case of uh, preference as to dividends because uh, if dividends are not declared then there is nothing to uh, uh, ask for uh, preference on no so uh, there is no guarantee that they will be getting their privileges okay preferred shares as to dividends no they simply give the holder preference to receive dividends to the extent stated which may be a fixed amount or a percentage before dividends are paid to the holders of common stock okay and when we say preference as to assets that's simply the privilege to receive the value of the assets of the corporation in case of liquidation 
Now, in case of preferred shares that are cumulative, no, they accumulate. Okay? If a dividend is omitted in any year, then it must be made up in a later year before any dividend may be paid on the common shares in that later year. Okay? So it's like dividends in arrears. If the stipulated dividend is not paid in a given year, it shall be added to the dividend which shall be due the following year. And the accumulated dividends must be paid to the holder before any dividend may be paid to the holders of common stock. Okay? So, cumulative nga. It accumulates. Okay? If it's non-cumulative, there is no need to make up for undeclared dividends. Okay? The dividend source is restricted to the earning of the particular year. In other words, dividends which have passed, they are forever gone. Okay, if dividends are not declared in a given year, the right to uh, dividends for that particular year is extinguished. Okay? Now, let's talk about uh, participating preferred shares. No? They give to the holder not only the right to receive the stipulated dividends at the preferred rate, but also to participate with the holders of common shares in the remaining profits proportionately after the common shares have been paid the amount of the stipulated dividend at the same preferred rate. Okay? Non-participating shares, on the other hand, are those which entitle the holder to receive the stipulated preferred dividends and no more. Okay? The balance, if any, is given entirely to the common stocks. Now, uh, there's such a thing as a cumulative participating share, which is a share which is a combination of the cumulative and participating share. The holder here is entitled not only to dividends in arrears, no, as I mentioned earlier, but also after receiving his preferred share of dividends, he can participate with the holders of common stock in the remaining profits. Okay? Now, uh, let's talk about par value shares. No? Par value shares are those with a specific money value fixed in the articles and appearing in the stock certificate for each share of stock of the same issue. Okay? The par value indicated in the stock certificate that represents the amount of money or property contributed by the stockholder to the capital stock of the corporation. The purpose is to uh, fix the minimum issue price to assure creditors that the corporation will receive a minimum amount for its stock. But that is not necessarily the price or market value at which investors buy or sell the stock, which may be higher, no? Okay? So, par value, that's different from market value. Okay? Market value is the price a willing seller would sell and a willing buyer would buy with both not being under abnormal pressure to buy or sell. Par value is also different from uh, book value. Okay? Book value is arrived at by dividing the net value of the to total corporate assets, meaning the capital and the surplus, dividing that by the number of shares issued or outstanding. Now, uh, why why uh, why would the, why would we want par value shares? No, they have certain advantages. No, they are easier to sell because the public is more attracted to buy these shares. There is greater protection to creditors. There is unlikelihood of sale of subsequently issued shares at a lower price, and there is unlikelihood of the distribution of dividends that are only ostensible profits. Okay. However, take note that subscribers can be held liable to corporate creditors for their unpaid subscription, okay? And that the stated uh, face value of the share, that's not an accurate criterion of its actual value, okay? So, uh, we have par value shares. We also have no par value shares. And, uh, of course, no par, no par value shares, they do not have any stated or par value appearing on the face of the stock certificate. So it does not state how much money it represents. While all the par value stocks must be issued at a uniform value or price, no par value stocks may be issued from time to time at different prices or values. Although the holders of all these shares are entitled to share equally in the distribution of the profits and assets of the corporation. Okay? So, even if there is no par value, it has what is called issued value. Okay? 
the issued value is the consideration fixed by the corporation for its issuance. Now, uh, no par value shares, okay, they do not represent any proportionate interest in the capital stock measured by value, but only an aliquo part of the whole numbers of such shares of the issuing corporation. So the capital stock of the corporation is expressed to be divided into a stated number of shares. Like uh, my capital stock, let's say I'm a corporation, my capital stock is 100,000 shares. Okay, so it's expressed that way instead of in money. So if there is a holder of 1,000 shares, he is an aliquo sharer in the assets of the corporation. So he has an inchoate right to 1,000 as to 100,000 or 1,000 over 100,000 or 1 is to 100 no? of the corporation. Okay, So uh, let's say I have 1,000 shares in a corporation that has 100,000 shares. I am an inchoate own. I have an inchoate interest in 1 over 100 of that corporation. Okay? Take note that the uh, banks trust companies, insurance companies, pre-need companies, public utilities, uh, building and loan associations, and other uh, corporations which are authorized to obtain or access funds from the public, whether publicly listed or not, huh? they are not permitted to issue no par value shares of stock. Okay, And uh, just remember what I also discussed last episode, okay, that the uh, no par value shares of stock are deemed fully paid and non-accessible and the holder of such shares shall not be liable to the corporation or to its creditors in respect thereto. No par value shares must be issued for a consideration of at least 5 pesos per share. Okay, And the entire consideration received by the corporation for its no par value shares shall be treated as capital and they shall not be available for distribution as dividends. So the main advantages of no par value stocks are, their, are that uh, their prices are flexible and they are usually low price and low priced and therefore they enjoy wider distribution. Okay? Now let's move on to uh, voting shares. Okay? And as the name implies, they are shares of stock that give the stockholder the right to vote. Okay? Usually, this right to vote is given to the holders of common shares and it is withheld no? uh, from preferred shares. Usually, the preferred shares do not have the right to vote. And a kapalit non is the privileges given to the preferred shares. Okay, And uh, one share is usually equal to one vote. Not usually, it's really equal to one vote. One share is to one vote. But we'll talk about that next time. Okay, Take note, however, that voting shares cannot be converted into non-voting shares, okay? And non-voting shares, no, as the name again implies, they simply do not give the right to vote to the stockholder. Take note that uh, no share may be deprived of voting right, rights, no? No share may be deprived of voting rights except those classified as preferred shares or redeemable shares. So, uh, preferred shares or redeemable shares are those which may be deprived of voting rights. However, no, even if you are an owner of a uh, non-voting share, no, there are certain matters upon which you can still vote, okay, which are listed by the law, such as amendment of the articles, adoption and amendment of the bylaws, say lease or other disposition of all or substantially all the corporate property, incurring, creating, increasing bonded indebtedness, increase or decrease of uh, authorized capital stock, merger or consolidation, investment of corporate funds in another corporation or business, and dissolution. Okay, don't worry about that list. That's codal, no? Just check the law. It's there, okay? So, uh, only those matters. They can only vote on those matters in case they own a share that has deprived them of voting rights, okay? Why? Because the law says, Except for those mentioned, a vote required to approve a corporate matter is deemed to refer only to shares with voting rights. So if it's a corporate matter, only those voting shares can make a vote. Okay? Even if the right to vote has been denied to those shares, 
there are certain matters on which they can vote upon which I mentioned earlier. Okay? So for what do I mean corporate matters? If the right to vote has been denied, they cannot vote for instance, no, in the election of directors. Okay? But they can still vote on amendment of uh, the articles, adoption, or amendment of the bylaws, etc. They just cannot vote on a certain corporate matter. Okay? Now take note, this is also very important, that in case a corporation issues a class of uh, non-voting shares, they, there must always be a class of shares with complete voting rights. Okay? In other words, if you're going to issue non-voting shares, there should always be a class of shares with complete voting rights. Okay? Now, what are founders' shares? Okay? These are shares issued to the organizers and promoters of a corporation in consideration of some right or property. And uh, they usually share in the profits only after a certain percentage has been paid to the holders of the common stock. Okay? Now, what's so special about them? They have certain special privileges over other stock when it comes to voting and division of profits in excess of a minimum dividend on the common stock. Okay? Uh, so, they have special privileges. They can vote and uh, the, the division of profits no, in case of uh, in excess of a minimum dividend on the common stock. Huh? Just take note, this is also important when it comes to founder shares, that if the privilege granted is an exclusive right to vote and be voted for in the election of directors, it must be for a limited period not to exceed five years from the date of incorporation and it shall not be allowed if it will violate the anti-dummy law the foreign investments act and other pertinent laws okay now let's move on to uh, redeemable or callable callable shares okay redeemable shares are shares which may be purchased by the corporation from the holders of such shares upon the expiration of a fixed period regardless of the existence of unrestricted retained earnings in the books of the corporation and upon such other terms and conditions stated in the articles and the stock certificate representing the shares subject of course to the rules and regulations issued by the SEC okay now redeemable shares are usually preferred shares and as such they may be deprived of voting rights Except, of course, for the matters I mentioned earlier. No? There are certain matters, again, which non-voting shares may still vote upon. Okay? And the uh, redeemable shares are redeemable at a fixed date or at the option or of either the issuing corporation or the stockholder or both at a certain redemption price. Meaning, in case of repurchase or reacquisition of the share, they shall be exchanged for cash or property. Okay? So, in case of a corporation redeeming the share, it gets back some of its stock and distributes cash or property to the stockholder in exchange. No? Now, uh, these shares may be issued only if they are expressly provided for in the articles and if there is nothing in the articles or the bylaws that says preferred shares may be redeemed, then they are irredeemable shares. Okay? So the articles have to say expressly, or the bylaws have to say that they are uh, there are shares that may be redeemed. Okay, again, if there is nothing in the articles that says that uh, preferred shares may be redeemed, then they are irredeemable. They cannot be redeemed. And common shares, they can never be redeemed in the strict sense of the word redemption. Okay. Now, treasury shares. What are treasury shares? They are those which have been lawfully issued by a corporation and fully paid for, but later they are reacquired by it either by purchase, redemption, donation, forfeiture, or other lawful means. Take note that only surplus earnings can be used to purchase treasury shares. No? Now, treasury shares are not retired shares. Okay? They do not revert to uh, the status of unissued shares of the corp corporation no but they are regarded as property acquired by the corporation which may be reissued or resold by the corporation at a price to be fixed by the board 
Hence, the price paid out of retained earnings for the value of reacquired shares should be treated in the corporate books as payment for the purchase of shares and an investment investment on such property. Okay? So treasury shares are issued shares, no? But since they are in the treasury, they are not outstanding shares and do not constitute a liability of the corporation. Okay? They may be resold by the corporation at any price that the board may see fit. And if they are sold or reissued, then they again become outstanding stock. Okay? And they regain whatever dividends and voting rights it originally held if sold and reissued. Okay? But while they are in the treasury, okay, before they are resold or reissued, okay, they constitute unrealized income and they are not considered as part of earned or surplus profits and they are not distributable as dividends. But if there are uh, retained earnings, then the treasury shares being property of the corporation may be distributed as property dividends. Take note no, that the treasury shares, no, they have no voting rights as long as they remain in the treasury. Why? Because a corporation cannot be a stockholder of itself. Okay? Treasury shares are also not entitled to dividends. Okay? They do not entitle the holder thereof to dividends. And who's the holder? The corporation. As long as they are in the treasury, dividends cannot be declared. Why? Because a corporation cannot declare dividends to itself because it would be, would be like taking out money from one pocket and putting it in the other pocket. It's like it's paying itself. Okay? So you cannot do that. Okay? Now again, there may be other kinds of uh, stock uh, like escrow stock, but just read that on your own. No, I just uh, discussed the most common and the more important ones mentioned in the law. Okay? Now, how does one become a, an owner of stock or a stockholder? Okay? It can be by subscription contract, purchase of treasury shares, sale or other transfer from a previous uh, stockholder of the outstanding shares of an existing uh, or, or through an existing subscription no? or through stock dividends. Okay? Now, let's talk about subscription contract. And the law defines a subscription contract as a contract for the acquisition of unissued stock in an existing corporation or a corporation which is still to be formed, okay? Regardless of the name given to it by the parties, okay? Following the rule in Obligon, of course, no? Na, uh, contract is determined by its body and not what is what it is called by the parties, okay? Take note that in consonance with the trust fund doctrine, which I discussed last episode, stock subscriptions, no, they are in the nature of a trust fund, okay? In that they are to be maintained unimpaired for the protection of corporate creditors. In other words, subscribers who have not paid in full and who have not been released from the obligation to pay are not, uh, they are, uh, they, they have not been released from their obligation to pay. They are debtors. Okay? They are debtors of the corporation for the balance. May utang sila sa corporation. Mayaran nyo yung uh, unpaid subscription nyo. And in case there is a corporate creditor who has exhausted all his remedies against the corporation to satisfy his claim, he may go after that uh, subscriber to hold him liable on his unpaid subscription okay because remember as a general rule um, the corporation has a separate personality from the stockholders but so the creditor cannot go after the stockholder if it has a claim against the corporation but a creditor can go after the stockholder for his unpaid subscription okay that's part of the trust fund doctrine okay now, a subscription is different from a stock option, which is simply a privilege granted to a party to subscribe to a certain portion of the unissued capital stock of a corporation within a specified period and under the terms and conditions of the grant, which may be exercised at any time within the period granted. Okay? Subscription is also different from a warrant which is a type of security that entitles the holder 
to the right to subscribe to the unissued capital stock of a corporation or to purchase issued shares in the future. And th this is evidenced by a warrant certificate which may be sold or offered for sale to the public. Okay? There are different kinds of warrants. No? We have uh, subscription warrant, covered warrant, warrant certificate, warrant instrument, detachable warrant, etc. Okay? Now, uh, from the definition of the subscription contract, we have two kinds. No? It may be a pre-incorporation uh, subscription, which under section 60 is a subscription of shares in a corporation still to be formed. Okay? It shall be irrevocable for a period of at least six months from the date of subscription. No, you cannot revoke it within uh, six months from the date of subscri subscription. That's the general rule. However, it may be revoked no, if the following conditions are met. No? All of the other subscribers consent to the revocation. The corporation fails to incorporate within the same period or within a longer period stipulated in the contract of subscription or if the revocation is done before the filing of the articles with the SEC. Okay, so those are the only situations in which the pre-incorporation subscription may be revoked. Otherwise, it is irrevocable for a period of at least six months from the date of subscription. In other words, no? No pre-incorporation subscription may be revoked after the articles are submitted to the SEC. Okay? On the other hand, a post-incorporation subscription is simply one which is entered into after the issuance of the certificate of uh, incorporation or registration. Okay? Now, uh, what is the consideration for stocks? No? Ano pambabayad mo? What can be accepted as uh, payment for stocks? No, That's provided for in Section 61, which says, no, Stocks shall not be issued for a consideration less than the par value or the issued price of those stocks. Okay? Now, uh, the consideration for the issuance of stock may be actual cash paid to the corporation. It may be property, tangible or intangible, which is actually received by the corporation and necessary or convenient for its use and lawful purposes at a fair valuation equal to the par or issued value of the stock. Okay? Now, uh, it, the consideration may also be labor performed or services actually rendered, actually rendered to the corporation. Okay? Consideration may also be previously incurred indebtedness of the corporation. It may also be amounts transferred from unrestricted retained earnings to stated capital. Okay? It may also be outstanding shares exchanged for stocks in the event of reclassification or conversion. Okay? It may also be shares of stock in another corporation. And finally, any other generally accepted form of consideration. No? Again, this is CODAL. Okay, just check the law if uh, you didn't catch them all, no? Okay, so where the consideration is other than actual cash, or if it consists of intangible property such as patents or copyrights, then the valuation of the, those uh, properties, no? It will be initially determined by the stockholders or by the board, okay? But it is subject to the approval of the SEC, and the approval of the SEC is required because remember, if the consideration is other than cash, then its value must be worth the value of the stocks which are issued. Okay? Take note also that the shares of stock shall not be in ex it shall not be issued in exchange for promissory notes or for future service. Again, if you noticed earlier, I emphasized that the services or labor, they must have been actually rendered to the corporation already. Hindi pwede sa future services. Okay? Or for promissory notes. Okay? Also, take note that the issued price of no par value shares, they may be fixed in the articles or by the board. No? And the only time the board can fix the issued price of no par, par value shares if is if the uh, they are given authority either through the articles or through the bylaws. 
and if the board does not fix it or if the issued price is not fixed in the articles then the stockholders can fix it but the stockholders must be at least majority or must represent at least majority of the outstanding capital stock at a meeting duly called for the purpose okay and just remember also that no par value shares cannot be issued for a consideration less than 5 pesos. Now, it must be at least 5 pesos. Okay? So, that's it for uh, part 1 on uh, the discussion of stocks. Okay? I hope you may have picked up a thing or two. And I hope to see you next time, guys. Okay? See you soon. Bye.